Thank you for joining us today in the Moroso R&D department. Today, we're gonna to discuss pressure section selection for Moroso trilobe dry sump pumps. My name is Scott Hall, and I've been in the R&D department for over 26 years at Moroso, and I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of race teams and engine builders. My name's Doug Vine. I've been here for 16 years. I'm one of the regional sales managers here, and I also work on the tech line, and I work with a lot of engine builders, race teams, race shops, and the like. So Moroso Performance has had a long history of building dry sump pumps for the racing industry. Our most recent pump, which is about 15 years old, is what we call our trilobe pump. Now the name comes from the trilobe cloverleaf design of our scaven sections. Now these are all aluminum pumps with a spur gear pressure section. And what makes them nice is they're very modular and have a variety of applications and performance. So what we offer is five different pump sizes as far as gear sets are concerned. We start at a 600 pressure section, we jump to a 900, which is in inches. We go to a 1200, we go to a 1500, and we also offer a 1800 size gear for our most demanding engines and larger ap applications. All right, guys, so typically there's a, a list of things we'd want to know about your specific application to make sure that you're going to get the right pump and especially the correct size pump. Right, Scott? Yeah, absolutely. So, so some of the things we would like to know is what type of application first the second thing is going to be what type of block you have if it's a hemi if it's a big block if it's a road race car uh you know starting very generically at the top and working our way down the list um what we need to know also is you know exactly what kind of rpm range your engine is going to run in to size the pump appropriately there's a lot of things that we need to know and we will ask these questions once you guys call in or send emails or maybe comment below, whatever it may be, to figure out the right size pump for your needs. There are some applications where a small block Chevy is actually gonna flow more than a big block Chevy based on valve spring oilers, piston oilers, whether you're running a restrictor or not. We run through a lot of variety of things that go on RPM ranges. There's some engines that have large clearances based on horsepower needs. Uh, some have tighter clearances. And all these pressure sections have kind of been figured out by gallons per minute of flow over time to know what all these engines kind of require because pressure is one thing, volume is another. And the other big thing that we've been dealing with lately is a lot of these front drive setups is how much RPM the motor runs and what we can spin the pump at. Because obviously with the pro drive, a lot of those systems, we're stuck at 50%. Absolutely. If you have a pro charger drive or a, an Alston blower drive, or you have a, a LDR car that's got a, you know, a twin turbo setup, there's different rates at which we can spin the pump and different ways to drive the pump. So those are some of the things we're definitely gonna need to know. Um, you know, to get you guys sized correctly for the right pump. And if we're belt driving a pump, typically we can speed it a little bit faster if you want to get some more volume or more pressure out of it where with these drives that are already established, we can. Now that's one of the reasons why the larger pressure sections have become so popular. It's not so much that the cars need more volume and more pressure, but we're stuck at 50%. And a lot of these engine combinations are lower RPM, so we need to get the volume and pressure early on with a large section. Also, if you're gonna run a naturally aspirated uh, comp engine, something like that, and you're looking to build big vacuum numbers, we're gonna maybe wanna spin the pump really fast, but set you up with a smaller pressure section size so that we're not creating a exuberant amount of pressure at the end of your run. You know, we'd like to see you going down the track with 70 to 80 PSI versus 100 to 110. Yeah. And with our, all of our pressure sections that we named off, we know how much volume that these things are flowing and we know our bypass spring adjustments also. So we have a lot of data and info. We've done a lot of different engines. We can kind of get you zoned in on exactly what you need. But like Doug was saying, some of these things want big vacuum and we can spin these pumps 80 to 100%, no problem. But we gotta get the pressure section size right. And the big thing is on a lot of motors, we're trying to find all the efficiency we can. So spinning a pump and making excessive pressure isn't what's in order for that combination. So there's a lot of cases where we gotta be real critical on exactly what we're doing. We don't wanna give you too much and we definitely don't wanna give you too little volume. All right, guys, so the last thing we're gonna to touch upon here is um, typically how we come about suggesting a certain part number pump for each call that comes in. Now, what we typically like to do is take the information gathered that we talked about earlier, and we like to apply that to what we know works best. People typically will call in and say, hey, I wanna make 85 pounds of oil pressure down track, and I've got a, 
a big block Chevy Merlin block and uh, XYZ oil pan on it. So we say, okay, typically that flow requirement would be. Yes, like eight and a half, nine, ten 10 gallons or so. Okay, so we know that we take the math, we put it into the equation and we say, this size gear set would be applicable for your needs. And then we get into oil temperature. We get into inlet size yep. of the pump. Viscosity of the oil. Viscosity of the oil. Yep. Certain things that are gonna help dictate what that pump's able to do. Yeah. And so we look at these parameters because you want oil pressure because that's what your gauge says. Gosh, do we wish they had oil volume gauges instead because ultimately oil volume is what's pulling away the heat from the bearing in the journal. Pressure is just a good indicator and a measurement of restriction, but we know that with oil viscosity and temperature, that number varies a bunch. That thing will still flow 10 gallons a minute, whether it's making 60 PSI or 100 PSI. And we see that on our oil pump stand all the time. We can manipulate that pressure heavily with oil temperature, but the flow is always there. And so we'll ask you, hey, if you're running a 60 weight oil, but you're never getting the thing up to 150 P or 150 degrees, that's gonna change the pressure section size. And we cannot stress enough two things. What is your oil temperature? And how much volume do we need? Pressure, I don't care when you're driving back from a run what it's making on the return road. We sure. care what it makes on the two-step, leaving the starting line, and what it's got going on. So oil temperature, oil viscosity, these parameters will matter to us also because oil volume is our job to get you the right amount of volume. Pressure will be dictated by the bypass adjustment and how much restriction your motor makes. And just a reminder, everybody, the oil pressure bypass adjuster is not a volume though. No. This no. is a fine tuning <laughs> instrument on the back end of your pump yes. to allow you to make fine tune adjustments. Yeah. It's not going to have any rendering on the volume of the output of the pump. Yeah. So please, please, um, don't think that's going to solve yeah, your problem. Let's get that yeah, out of your head yeah, right now. Yeah, if you're making 30 pounds of oil pressure at idle and it's hot, don't crank the screw and it's not going to make 80. It's going to make 30. That bypass only adjusts once the oil pressure gets to that point. But if it's sure. thin oil and it's hot, it ain't getting there until you give it RPM. So again, what's this thing on the two-step? What's it under a load? That's where the oil pressure matters, not what's at idle. Well, we appreciate you spending time watching this video. And obviously we wanna give you some information from right here at Moroso, exactly what we need to know from you to help you out. But there's a reason why we have so many options on these dry sump pumps. If anyone has any questions, please give us a call. Our number can be found on the website or give them the tech line a call. Uh, you can give me a call directly if you'd like as well, if you have some in-depth questions on pumps and we'll help you out just as best we can. Absolutely, hopefully we've given you some information and some things to think about and get with us with. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below or go to moroso.com.